Good morning. It is just so Trish. And I want to talk to you about something I came across last night and it really got my, my wheels turning in my mind. And so today we're going to talk about ADHD executive function. So I talked a little bit about this last Friday and it was so well received. And I have been doing some more research. In fact, I got my little book out and I'm taking notes on the things I'm consuming. And after watching this last video, I realized why I really need to be taking notes on the things I consume. And I wanna talk about homeschool time management issues and how this plays an effect with ADHD executive function issues. I don't have any methods to solve this. I just, if you're coming here for methods to solve this, I've yet to discover concrete ones yet if that makes sense. So again, I'm doing this live because it's just so much easier for me to get a video together and finish it if I do it live versus if I record it and then remember to get it uploaded and then go through all the work. It kind of works out better live. I hope you don't mind. And it gives me a little time for those that happen to be up in my time morning to interact as I discuss this. So in... I don't know if you know, and things to think about. If you think your child might be ADHD, take a look at yourself. Um, and I say that in the nicest, loving way, but take a look at either yourself, your partner, your parents, your grandparents. As I didn't realize I was ADHD until I just was overwhelmed with the fact that one of my children had to be ADHD. And when I began doing that research is when the light bulb went off for me, like, oh, here's my whole life. So for those that don't know, I am just so Trish. I have six kids. I have been homeschooling for the last 10 years, maybe 11. And my children go from right out now at this moment from 14 down to three. I came to be a stay-at-home mom as an engineer, environmental engineer. Everything was stacked against me as an ADHD kid in school. Nobody had much hopes for me and I have a master's degree because it wasn't until I went to college I kind of found my fit. I didn't find my fit when I was in the public school system. And because of that, it made me realize I wanted to homeschool when we had children. So if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. All right. So there are groups. I'm not sure if you know this, but I'm sure you have to know this. But I didn't realize it until I began looking. There are ADHD groups in Facebook. And I will have to say I am in a couple of them. And I just cannot begin to tell you how normalized it makes me feel my life is. Up until that point of being in those groups and being with other ADHD people, I thought the weird stuff I did had a lot to do with me being irresponsible, unmotivated, lack of discipline, you know, all those being lazy, all those kind of things. Um, I would kind of really put myself down on those aspects. And it has, being in that group, and the things that they will come up with and have a good laugh about cracks me up because it is so my life. You know, there's a lot of times in one of the groups I'm in, they'll have a, so what did you spend up? What did you stay up all night researching because you couldn't sleep? And the stuff they come up with is absolutely hilarious. And yet it's relatable because that's, that's what I do. You know, it's, it's incredible. So in one of the groups, they posted a video. I put the video in the description below. I went ahead. I'm getting a little better, especially if I'm doing live chats. And I'm like, I know what I'm going to talk about. I put it in below because if I keep saying I'm going to come back and do it later, I typically don't do it. So below is a link to the video I watched last night. I will tell you between last night when I first seen it and this morning, I think I've watched it four times. The first time was really hard to watch a lot of information. And then the last time I watched it, I watched it at half speed because I couldn't, I wanted to take notes. 
on what he was saying. And it was crazy when I started taking the notes, I noticed I didn't catch everything he had said the first time or the first four times I listened. So this is Dr. Russell Barkley. And he did a lecture in 2012, so six years ago. And it just had to do, this is how you treat ADHD based on science. I think, I don't know if that's the exact lecture. I know based on the channel, the channel's ADHD videos. That's what they titled the video. And so here's the thing. He's a psychiatrist. He's talking to a psychiatrist. He's talking about a lot of different things. But I had some definite take homes that really, as I was going through this, was like, oh, this is how I change my homeschool up. And on top of it, I'm a little bit like, oh, and this is my biggest obstacles in my homeschool. Because not only are my children ADHD, I'm extremely ADHD. And some of the things they deal with as their mother, I'm like, okay, I can help them. But at the same time, I have these same issues. So what is really neat, and I like it when I find more information, ADHD people do not have an issue focusing. If you have watched your children, they know how to focus. The constant debate is, are they focusing on what we need them to focus? And typically they're not. They're focusing on the little things in life sometimes. They, get, they can get lost in their own thoughts. You know, they can get lost looking out into the sky. And you ask them what they're doing and they can't even verbalize what they're doing. And... <laughs> Good morning, Darcy. And so as much as we're like, you're daydreaming, you're off into never, never land, this is not productive. Their ability to observe is huge, is absolutely huge. And the first thing he like jumps off, Dr. Barkley jumps off with is the fact that like in the brain, in the brain, we have knowledge and then we have performance. If I don't mess my hair up on this, knowledge, performance, and ADHDers don't connect. And so we know what to do. We just don't do it is a lot of the things we know how to do. But so as ADHD, we have a problem with when and where to do it, not what and how to do it is the big thing he said, you know. And so it looks like we're unmotivated. It looks like we're lazy. But um, it's, I wrote it down a couple times. It's like problem doing what we know we know what to do but we don't do it and we can't get that connection and it's really cool because as much as he talked about medication he talked about we don't need to teach skills here's one of the biggest problems that i've run into we don't need to teach skills i've got skills like nobody knows what we need to do is re-engineer the environment so i'm thinking about this on a homeschool aspect but i'm going to tell you the things i kind of pulled up works for even if you're public school watching your you have public school kids and then they come home and you're like hello so definitely go check that video out um the other big part is that um the it's all executive function and one of the hardest things is time time management our problem is time and timing. And this was kind of huge for me and very echoing to me at the same time, because I have always said, and I've always known, I have no concept of time and I have no concept of money. And this has always been a big issue. And one of my most successful times of being on a budget had to do with, I dealt with cash. And my husband, being a very note taker, loves that credit card because he can see exactly where I spent money. But if I spend with a credit card, I always spend more. If I only deal with cash, I can be very self-regulated. But there's no self-regulation with credit card. And of course, I would feel very guilty for this. And after listening to him, this is very normal, especially with the executive function. The same thing with time. I have no concept of time. I don't know if I've been in the store for 20 minutes or if I've been in the store for four hours. I have no concept of time. I have a very hard time being places at the right time. I will stress myself out trying to make sure I don't undershoot or overshoot being where I'm supposed to be. 
I still have nightmares from college. My college nightmares was trying to figure out when and where to be. Those constantly, I, I would keep these little note cards in my pocket of when and where to be. And at the same time, I felt so crazy that this is what, I mean, I'm a smart, intelligent young woman, and yet I can't figure out when and where to be. And at one point, I, the absent-minded professor always kind of comes to mind when I say these things, but absent-minded professor was how maybe I just need to be that weird, crazy person that has notes everywhere. And I'm like, I'm not going to be the weird, crazy person with notes everywhere. But at the same time, I would constantly make lists, and, you know, trying to find those things that helps. I remember at one point it was coming to the end of semester and I actually had post-it notes of every color. And on one of my blank walls in my apartment, one color was for each class. And I wrote and post a note each deliverable, each task that needed to be done. And I put them in order. So then as the semester was coming to an end, I could visually see the task and I made them small because the more things I could cross out, the better. When I read you some of the ideas that he had and share with them, you're going to see like, this is like good stuff. And the point was I could pull the post-it notes off the wall when I was done. And it let me visually see what I needed to do. And so the big point and the big take home I really got was tightening up accountability. As we fail and as our kids struggle in executive function, the accountability is so important. It has to be continuous. It has to be, he said, he has to be more accountable to other people more often with more consequences. And he puts in there, even if these consequences are artificial, you know, like kind of created and they, and with those consequences, they have to be really close and right there on time. It cannot be later. Okay. When I first started listening, I was like consequences and being around legalistic people, it's really easy to think consequences as negative things, but no, positive consequences, encouragement, rewards are huge. And I always laugh because I always explained, um, when I explain to other moms, especially when I'm more one-on-one -on -one and we're having coffee and we're talking and I'm like, you don't understand. You give me a reward. You give me something to work for and I will achieve it every time. You know, and it was just crazy because the things he had to say I already knew, but I didn't give them much weight. And most times I forget about them, which is also another thing. Okay. So people with ADHD or children with ADHD and our children with executive function connections, they have to be held more accountable than any other of your children. Now, if you're blessed to have just ADHD kids, then you know you need to do this with all your ADHD kids, with all your children. But when you have some and others and your ones with ADHD feel micromanaged. You're going to, you know, we're training that executive function. I have this constant debate with my husband. He makes me crazy because I always feel like he's micromanaging me. And in the same token, without me saying it to him, I know I need to be micromanaged. But I hate to be micromanaged. So... We need cues. And in the cues, it's like we need um, we need to externalize everything. And that's the big part. And what it comes down to is the reason we have to externalize things is there's something this countdown, this mental countdown he talked about. And it has to do with if you can give a list of information, how much can your child repeat back in order? And this is this mental countdown, mental um, mental problem solving. And what it has to do with, although we have amazing memories, but our ability to process and hold information at one time while we're processing is really small. And doing math problems mentally, I can do some really big math problems mentally, but honestly, I have to keep like my fingers or something or visualize or something to create like this external thought with a number. Um, you give me numbers really quick. I can't. In fact, I started laughing because when I was trying to write more accountability to other people more often, more consequences, I had to rewind that little tiny 10 second blurb 
five times to catch everything because I couldn't process it. A lot of times I will tell people, I'm not very audible. I'll just hand them the paper. I'm like, will you write it down for me? I'm not very audible. It takes me a while to process all that information you gave me and I can't repeat it, which probably has a lot to do with why I love online courses. I love online courses. I wish there were online courses when I went to college. I would have done so much better because I many times have to stop, rewind, stop, rewind, because I could not catch everything. And, but yet at the same time, I like to watch things two to three times. The first time I like to watch it double speed, which probably sounds counterintuitive, but I like to watch it double speed very, very fast. So I can understand where we're going. And then I like to go back and listen to it normally. And then if I'm taking notes, I like to go back and actually catch all the parts, slow down where there's so much information to write down, speed up where there's not much I need to get. And I will watch it two or three times. And I love that ability to do that. All right. So people with ADHD executive function or our children, they need cues. They need signal signs, lists, cards, charts, and posters. And trust me, I'm not doing this information justice compared to what he had to say but i want to talk about it how it fits in our homeschool so do that in the other room she's brushing her hair and the brushing is sidetracking me <laughs> um and it needs to happen where it happens at so think about it if you run into in the bath you know our kids in the bathroom there's a lot of things that need to get done for oral hygiene and taking care of, you know, and we almost need to put that list in the bathroom. If we have this idea, and I've done this in the past, I'm gonna put everything on one list in one place, it's not going to work. It's not going to work because it's not where and when it needs to be that information is there. We have a hard time having that information, that to-do list mentally, when and where we need it. And so we need to externalize, and it has a lot to do with externalizing. We need consequences but most of all as parents to our adhd kids we have to have compassion and willingness to help them change the environment to externalize the things they need in order for it to be successful and i mean i'm direct quoting that one he didn't quite say it with homeschoolers but we have to be willing and we have to be compassionate because this isn't about negative consequences you negatize us, you might get a little bit to begin with, but after that, you have nothing. All right, so real quick, I just want to go through these after I've, you know, gone on. Um, I want to go through these and kind of my quick ideas, what it has to do. And then maybe Friday, either Wednesday, we can have this talk as on Mama Chat at two o'clock when I go live or Friday, I'll kind of continue this up. Okay, so I really like this because he nailed down some things to do. Things to do. Number one, externalize information at points of performance. Like I just said, you know, like brushing the teeth. So in our house, I'm thinking at our animals. We have a lot of animals and they get most of the stuff done. But a lot of times they will just forget the next thing. And one of the ones has been the pig pen. So the kids are raising pigs. They remember to do the check the water um, pressures. They remember to check the feed and feed them. They, re, you know, they remember certain things. But then it's like, but today in about a half an hour, I need to get to the feed store because we didn't remember to check the feed, the amount of bags we had left. And now we're down to the last bit of bags. And we don't want to get that close. You know, and if... And my, my husband and I and our frustrations a couple weeks ago, I'm like, you know what we need is like the sign at the um, fast food restaurant that in the bathroom that says what time, who checked what. You know what I'm talking about? Did this get done? You know, and they have to initial it. And I'm like, maybe we should do that for the kids. But in all reality, what Dr. Barkley said is, yeah, exactly. You should kind of do that. That would work. You know, so at points, like at the laundry room, having the list of the laundry room, I didn't think I would be that parent, even though I kind of need it. 
I've been actually thinking I was seeing one somewhere. Somebody had a key ring, a laminated piece on their key ring with a little checklist. And I think this was something to do with like the public school teacher on her Lenard. She had like every kid's name, every, um, every kid's name. So she can quickly go through um, where they were supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there, you know, had this like little laminated checklist. And I'm like, how smart would that be something like that to keep on my key ring to be like, do we have, you know, just these little basic informations. And as a parent or as an adult, I feel like, Oh my goodness, I have to have a checklist for myself. But even I have issues with executive function. I'm like, Oh, I probably should do that. Um, that would even include like, if you have your math textbook and there's certain things that need to be done a certain way, instead of asking them to remember to do that, you'd post, Literally, I would think stick a sticker or a post-it note on the textbook, you know, keeping it very, here's what you need to know. So you can do that with charts, posters, and lists. The other part is consequences in large time gaps between concepts. Okay, so one of the hard parts is, and we deal with this all the time, like with science fair, we're doing science fair project right now and doing writing. And when you give an ADHD kid, a large project that expands over time. Most times what happens? It doesn't. We have seen this so much in our 4-H projects. We have these record books and we are horrible. I've said, I'm like, we are so horrible at record books. I don't even know how to begin to tell you how horrible it is. But then listening to Dr. Barkley last night and he's talking about large time gap between consequences or that accountability we don't have the executive function to keep us checked in. And it's like, oh, so learning to break things up in tiny little pieces that are removing the whole long time part. Am I, let me see, let me see. I'm probably skipping. I'm kind of skipping right up into it. Um, how did I get here? Sorry, I know. I have my list here. This is so ADHD of me. But, um, into tiny little pieces. All right, because we have to externalize time. I'm so sorry if I'm a little bit all over the place. I really had this planned. So we have a hard time externalizing time. Like I told you, I got no concept of time and time periods. We have no internal clock. They have no internal clock. They don't know how to regulate all of the tasks to do things. And so one of the big things is clocks, clocks everywhere, timers. I mean, I have, can you see? I need a battery. I've showed you this one before. This is that neat little timer I've seen from Andrea Mills. And then I have my clock up there. My next one, and then I realized what I really want. And I told my husband, I said, this is what I want. This is my idea, is a little grandfather clock. I think they're about this big on Amazon. They're like $120 that chimes. and. I don't know if he'll like it, but I know I like it. I still remember it from kid, being a kid, but I can have a chime on the hour and in 15 minute increments. And I feel like that would be a good way it, as background sound for us and for my kids to begin feeling time, to begin having that reminder kind of deal. Um, breaking lengthy task into small tasks. I feel like I skipped something. I feel like I pulled out when I started talking about the science fair project and the record books that I had read something in here and now I can't find where it's at. But um, being able to break down the lengthy task into smaller tasks. And that was what I was doing in college with the things I had to get done and realizing how important that is. Externalize sources of motivation. I know I need this. And I realize I'm not doing it very well for my children. One of the motivations we have is at the end of the day, you can have a soda if you got all your work done. I see a lot of reward systems and ticket systems. In fact, Homeschool on the Hill had this amazing little ticket program she put together. And I love that. I've seen Andrea Mills. She has like this little reward that they get something. And I will tell you, I fail at that. One of the reasons I fail at that is my executive function fails to keep up with that. 
and realizing what can we do because we live in a tiny house what can we do to make sure that i can bring in something that is positive and motivating and i'm just kind of looking like well you know do what can i come up with a reward program system of rewards and you know one of our things too is like minecraft if you can get your work done by this certain time at this hour you have 30 minutes of minecraft if you don't get done with that time but in order for me to stick to that i have to write on the board what that rule is because you see i raced the rule that i had made and no longer i'm accountable for this or i'm able to externalize this and i'm like and I knew that would kind of happen, but I didn't know why until I've watched this video. Um, I talked about external mental problem solving and figuring out ways. This is why Matthew C works out really well for a lot of ADHD kids. They're able to see what they're doing. They have physical, mental, you know, those blocks count as markers. It works. Um, replenish willpower and five strategies for emotional regulation. So I really like this idea. He got into, you know, it takes a lot for our kids to have the willpower to stay focused. It takes a lot for me to stay focused. And he talked about things that empty it is practicing self-control will empty our willpower. Self that he called it self-regulating strength. He referred to it as a tank. And you can empty that tank very quickly by um, having to practice self-control, self-management of time, self-organization of problem solving, self-motivation, self-regulating. Do you see the notice there? Whenever they're trying to regulate restraint, time, problem solving, organization, emotion, and motivation, they're going to get exhausted. I watch it in my kids all the time. When I was gone for the four days to take my test, I came back and for two weeks, my son was just, nothing was there. And I'm like, really? And what I didn't take into account until I was listening last night was his self-regulation strength was gone from the not normal. I put those external motivators and accountabilities to him and I wasn't there. And because of that, he had to practice so much self-control that by the time the next task came, he had no self-control. He had no ability to go forth. But I love the idea of how to refill it. So the ideas of refilling it is use of rewards and positive emotion. Statements of self-encouragement. Oh my goodness, this is so important and yet I don't think much about it. And my daughter has started to do it too, but nobody else. I can do this. Just talking to yourself, I got this. I can do this. This is what I'm going to do. That positive self-talk, and I think it has a lot to do with our ears and our brains need to hear it, even if it's coming out of our own mouth. I know I've said that before. Even if it's coming out of our own mouth, our, our brain and our ears have to hear it. Um, doing a task in 10 minutes and then taking a three-minute break. So in 10 minutes, is that he's kind of calculating, and I know my children can work longer than that. At 10 minutes, you have not started depleting your self-regulating tank. You're not depleting it yet. So you can do any, they can do anything for 10 minutes without destroying their self-regulation tank. Um, but if they're into something and it doesn't take that much effort for them because they're interested or they, you know, they find it useful, what, they're in, what we're interested in, we have no problem self-regulating. It's the things we're not. And so giving them that 10 minutes, but then following it with a three minute break of giving their executive function a time to rest, that frontal lobe, a time to rest. And resting or meditating, he pulled out there, but just giving that three minute rest. Now be careful. As a mom, I'm gonna say, be careful. They don't go find things they're interested in and then you can't pull them out of that focus. The other part talking about getting that executive function refilled is visualizing and talking about the future rewards before and during a huge demanding task. Just, I had this for my test. I know I keep going back to me, not necessarily my kids, but in October or actually from April to October that I studied for that license. I had one friend 
and she would remind me of the rewards. She would remind me of the impact of the reward to me, my family, my kids. And so I would call her at when things got really hard, I would call her and I would say, pour into me and tell me why I'm doing this again. I really need to know. And what I was doing was I was visually and talking about the future reward during the demanding task, you know, and I didn't even know I was doing it. Um, routine physical activity is actually probably one of the best ways to help ADHD. Will you help him real quick get started? Um, it's one of the best ways to regulate. And he gets all into it. But it's so important that our kids are more physically active, especially if they have ADHD. <clears throat> so, and then he talks about glucose. And, you know, when you're in a really demanding situation, sipping, liquid glucose so gatorade a juice but sipping it not gulping it to help keep the sugar available for the frontal lobe because the frontal lobe is where all the executive tasks take place so i feel like i've rambled i am so sorry i just have been very excited about this i'm going to take some time and i'm going to keep going on <clears throat> to kind of figure out how to implement this into our homeschool how to make this more available just seeing this list has instantly given me a sense of tools as a parent again you go he's got slides the whole nine yards and watch his video but i keep looking at how do i implement one of the first things off is i definitely see because i need to break the task up into small pieces i tend to do that already by giving them a list and giving them a list that they need to um you need to go change your diaper go take your diaper off and go potty everybody's waking up it's so time for me to go but keeping their list crossable and achievable small task and i tend to do that i don't make long lengthy bulk task in their workbooks i've been using some spiral books i've got to get that done this morning but it's really easy to cross it out and then um, I definitely have got to do more clocks in the house. I need to definitely have set alarms and reminders for them and myself. Um, I've been looking at that. I feel like the clock is a big one. I definitely really want to move to a chiming clock. Something that's not abrasive to hear. Because I'm going to tell you that watch alarm is abrasive to have it go off. And... One of my kids has it set for a couple of certain days that it goes off between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. And it's always somewhere in the living room. And I and it's like an Easter egg hunt. I cannot find that thing. But, you know, figuring out ways to bring list in. Good job. Hold on. Finding ways to bring those lists in. And But at the same time, giving them the tools, not really giving them the tools, but giving them the external sources of motivation. That's where I've really got to work on. Darcy says kitchen timers. I have a couple. I know I need to be using them, but I also need to have clocks to let me know that time is passing for me, but also for them. But I do like the timers if I remember to set them because I need that external motivator and consequence to remind me to set the, the, the clocks. Um, but then also like sources of motivation how am i going to motivate my kids my daughter and i were talking last night and we're like he's, she's like how about going to if we can earn to go out and have culvers because then we can get our little lunch and we can get an ice cream or custard frozen custard and that would be awesome and i'm like okay cool you know and so i think it's important she wants the other ones and so i think it's important that as much fun as it is to have a long-term goal, we have to have short-term goals. We have to have immediate gratification and we have to have long gratification. We have to have both and bringing that in and what fits your family on that. And then replenishing their um, willpower and keeping them from exhausting their willpower is really important too. So I'm gonna really spend some time and dive in. I just wanna share like this like little nugget, this very long rambling little nugget 
of information because to me it was just so modifying 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 gratifying and motivating modifying it was so modifying for me motivating and gratifying that i realized you know there are tools here and some of the biggest things i've struggled with over the years is a lot of this executive function and trying to you know keep it all together so i'm gonna have to get going i'm so glad for y'all stopping in and and be part of me why part of this why i record this video and i hope again you don't mind me doing it live style and i will see you tuesday and if you haven't done so subscribe give me a thumbs up if you're here and I probably will have a couple videos later on posted somewhere here and probably a button right there that you can hit to subscribe. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.